G'day everyone, welcome back to Fix It In Post. My name is Nick. Today we are gonna look at how to basically use expressions to drive our animations. Wait, before you before you click off, just trust me. Trust me, you're gonna wanna watch this one. This is basically the game changer. It saves so much time in After Effects. Everything I do, I owe to expressions because if you can program your way out of a situation, you should totally do it. So let's get started. So we're gonna have a look at this first example here of this bauble that's spinning around. Now, the texture behind the bauble is actually a spinning, is uh, three spinning colors that have been set off with a fast blur. They just blur together like this. It's not very exciting, but they don't spin. And so I've got them all parented with a null. And what I wanna do is actually spin them around like this using the rotation. Now, of course you could do this by setting a keyframe and then go in the end and setting another keyframe which is also, you know, fairly acceptable. A lot of people will do that, but there is a smarter way. So what we can do is we're gonna take away those keyframes. Instead of using keyframes, we're gonna use an expression called time. Pizza time. To enable an expression, we need to hold the option or the alt key and go to the rotation and then click on one of the properties. In this case, it's gonna be rotation and it'll make the property go red and then bring up this text box. And in this text box, you can type in your expression or program After Effects to do what you like it to do. But in this case, we're just gonna type the word time. And as you can see, it starts to auto fill some things with other expressions you can use, but we're just gonna use the word time. And then we're just gonna press enter and then click out. Now, what's happening is that it's, you can't see, but it is turning very slowly. And that's because if you look at the scrubber here, uh, at a particular time, it is actually adding, you can see the actual numbers are moving, but it's moving very slowly. That's because it is feeding the value of this time into this value here. So in order to speed that up, we're gonna have to multiply it by a number. And so let's click back in here and then we'll add a star or we'll press shift eight. And then let's make it say 100. And then click out and let's see if this moves a little bit faster. And as you can see, that moves quite a lot faster actually. So that's one way you can use time to basically drive your animation. Now I'm gonna come back to this a bit later to show you why this is really important. Let's jump to our second expressions, which is the loop out expression. Now loop out expressions are my favorite things to use in After Effects because you only have to animate a few keyframes and you automatically will get a lot of action out of them because they'll behave in slightly different ways. Now right now we've just got three baubles here and uh, they, they're moving off and they've just got three keyframes. I'm gonna show you the rest of these layers just so you can see just the keyframes themselves. So they're all identical, they're just moving across the screen, but they stop. Now let's have a, let's apply the loop add expression to show you what it does. So let's go to the first one here. So let's go to the first one here and we're gonna press Alt, L option on the position and we're gonna type lowercase loop and then uppercase O and then out and that's gonna give you this expression with the parentheses. Now we're just gonna click it. Oh, I should have actually taken, but it didn't. We're gonna add those parentheses back in. Now, what's gonna happen here is that something will happen actually, it's completely fine. The default for the loop out is actually the cycle. So I'll just show you what happens when you just click here. And right now in the cycle loop, it basically looks at the first keyframe and the last keyframe. And then when it gets to the last keyframe, it starts the whole animation one more time until it gets through. And it will keep doing that until infinity. Now that's that's the loop cycle. You can actually explicitly call it if you want, but that's just the default. So we don't have to call it. Once you add a parent, you can add a, a what do you call a double parentheses and type cycle if you want to be more explicit about it. But that is the default setting for the loop out if you don't select anything in the brackets. Sponsor time. Are you wasting your days trying to create motion graphics on a deadline? Well, grab some of that time back today using the Lyric Video Creator Kit. But Nick, I don't need to make any Lyric videos today. True, but did you know that the Lyric Video Creator Kit can be used for more than just Lyric videos? 22 customizable presets, templates, motion backgrounds, and best of all, you don't need any After Effects skills. Just drag and drop them onto your Premiere timeline and you're good to go. So what are you waiting for? Grab that Lyric Video Creator Kit in the description today so you can get out of work early and go sit on some beach somewhere or wherever it is you like to go. You do you. All right, back to the tutorial. Now let's go to the next example, which is Offset, which is my favorite because I use that one quite a lot. Actually a super, super powerful uh, expression. So we'll click in there again. Again, we'll type lowercase loop 
and then uppercase out. And then in this case, we'll open the parentheses and we'll add quotation marks. I think I've been saying parentheses. What I meant to say was quotation marks. And then we'll add the word offset and then we'll press enter and then, oops, and then we'll press, and then we'll press out. And then this is what's gonna happen. So as you can see, it just keeps going. Now what's happening here is it takes the first and last keyframe. It looks at the distance between these two things and it'll actually offset. If you can imagine, it does another version of it here. So it's like it goes from there to there and then it'll start from there, from this point, from the last keyframe and then move to the next section. What's even better about this is that if you add keyframes in between, um, it'll actually just do exactly the same thing. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can. That's what's really fun about this loop is that it can be, it can just kind of go wherever you like. And now well, the interesting thing too about this loop is that the first and last keyframe doesn't have to be, uh, so you can see right here, they're on the same X axis. Uh, so they haven't actually moved. So it's like, that's great if it moves in the same axis. But if you actually move this axis, let's move this down. I'll show you what happens. This is really cool. And so it'll go down and then it'll actually go step down. Isn't that really, really cool? I really like, this is what I'm saying. It's really powerful. And with animation like this, you can really start to see the power of this because you can actually add quite complex animations between the first and the last keyframe. And it'll start doing some really funky things. I think it's really, really interesting, but we'll just delete that one. We'll just go back a few steps so you can understand what's happening. Now, ping pong sounds exactly like what it sounds like. Let's click in here, lowercase loop, uppercase out, quotation, um, exclamation, what do you call parentheses, and then we'll double quotation marks and we'll pick ping pong and then we'll press enter. And as you can imagine, it just ping pongs back and forth between the first keyframe and the last keyframe. So what it's doing is it goes to the first keyframe, goes to the last keyframe, and then it just travels back to the first keyframe, which is basically there. So that's pretty much all they are in a nutshell, which is pretty cool. So let's look at this practical example first. So right now we've got these two baubles that are just rolling around on this track. And actually there's a couple of things I would like to do to it. So one of them is actually rotate the composition as it's turning. And the other is to actually keep those keyframes looping around and around. So one of the things we can do, let's make this first one go round and around, and then this one go backwards and forwards. So of course you would just go to the first bauble. Let's press, press the position. As you can see here, there's a whole ton of keyframes here. I've actually got this really fantastic tutorial on how to basically use, uh, make an object follow a path that you've already set. And I'll link that at the end of this tutorial. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to alt click on the position and bring up the expression. And then we're going to press loop and then out quotation marks. And then obviously we'll add in a uh, cycle and this, will make the ball will just continue to roll round and around. So we'll go back to the beginning, which is fantastic. And that's exactly what we want. Now, the second one, we want to ping pong backwards and forwards. So let's bring up P for all the keyframes. Alt click on that. Let's type loop out. Again, remember lowercase loop, uppercase out. And then let's go to ping pong. Ping pong. All right, so here we go. It goes through and then it comes back the other way, which is great. Now, as you can see, it kind of just, uh, it kind of just cuts off. So just say in this particular scenario, this is, this is where loops may be. The limitation of loops is the fact that you can't exactly see where the keyframes are looping. So that could be a limitation, but in most cases, unless you're actually explicitly looping things, maybe you don't really care about that. But what's great, about this situation is that, all right, the keyframes are already set up, set the expressions. If I want to extend this comp out just a little bit, so let's make it say, for example, uh, let's make it 10 seconds. And then let's bring everything out. So we grab everything and extend it out. What's great is that since the expressions are on there, I no longer have to create any more keyframes to basically get it to do what I want it to do. So that is pretty much it. But as you can see, the textures run out in the baubles because if we go back to where the bauble texture was set, it was only set to five seconds. And so we need to actually extend the texture to actually go a little bit longer. So it actually is able to fill out the rest of the 10 seconds, because at the moment in this scenario, the bauble texture only goes for five seconds, but we want to make it go for 10. In fact, let's make it 20 just so that we can even expand that even more. So 20 seconds. And what's great is all you have to do 
is that since we've already set that expression on, um, we don't have to add any more keyframes. We just extend everything out and it just continues to loop while we are doing it, which is pretty neat, I reckon. And so just remember to go back in here and actually make sure you extend all the other things that you need to extend. I wish it was something that was actually incorporated into After Effects to actually make us auto extend all the comps below, but you know, I can't get everything I want, but that is pretty much it. And the last thing to do is just add a little bit of rotation. So let's go time. Let's make this 50, just a little bit slower than what we did last time. And then and now we're spinning around above our comp just to make it look a little bit funkier. And guys, if you're looking for a tutorial on how to basically allow an object to follow a path, I've got a great one right here. So check it out.